Hello, today I will be doing the Think Twice book tag. I was tagged by um, Alex of Stay at Home Reader and the tag was originally created by Jolene of Bookworm Adventure Girl and AJ Dunn of AJ Dunn Reads and Writes. I will link all of the channels in the description box down below as well as all the questions of this tag. So the first prompt is Double Vision, a book that features twins. So uh, I had one book immediately pop into my head when I saw this prompt and I did try to think of a more interesting answer to this question but this book just kept on returning um, so I'm just gonna go with it and they are the Twin Set St. Clair's series by Enid Blyton. These copies were my aunt's originally and then she gave them to me when I was young. Um, so they're probably from like the late 60s, early 70s. And I devoured these as a kid. I loved reading about their lives at boarding school and especially all the midnight feasts where they would get together in their dorms and have these amazing picnics with um, cakes and chocolates and tinned pineapple and for some reason sardines. I love these as a kid. I don't think they stand the test of time. I think they're probably going to be pretty problematic when I read them now but I do have great memories of these books and yeah and Anne O'Sullivan. The next prompt is Double Talk, a book with the word two or twice in the title. Now I'm gonna cheat a little bit on this one and pick There There by Tommy Orange, uh, which doesn't have the word two or twice, but it does have the word there twice. Uh, Tommy Orange is an indigenous author and this book is all centered around a big powwow event that's happening and just sort of all the drama that happens with um, everyone involved. Yeah, I really enjoyed reading this one. Prompt number three is Seeing Double, a book with a shadow, a reflection or a mirror image on the cover. And on the top of my head I couldn't really think of anything for this um, prompt. Um, so I had to just check my, my entire shelf. And I did find Animal Dreams by Barbara Kingsolver, which has these shadows of the cactus and the shadow of the little dog here. Um, yeah, I really love these sort of 90s covers that exist from Barbara Kingsolver's earlier work. Um, yeah, I also enjoyed this book. Um, I can't remember much of what it's about, but I I enjoy Barbara King's always writing style. The next prompt is Take Two, a book with similar covers, but by different authors. And I can see where they got this um, idea for this prompt from, because you can really see book trends in uh, book covers. Um, but because I don't really read that much new releases, um, I don't have that many of them on my shelves, but I did find two books which both have big pictures of bees on the cover um, and they are both short story collections as well. Um, this is The Diving Pool by Yoko Ogawa um, and At the Mouth of the River of Bees by Kai Johnson. Um, this one I can't remember if it had bees in the stories as well. This one definitely has. Yeah, and of these two, um, this is the one I would recommend picking up. And then we have I Second That, a retelling. So I'm taking retelling quite broadly um, and I'm gonna say The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Roffey. I actually read this with Alex who tagged me for this tag. Um, and this is a more of a reimagining of the 
the legend of the mermaid Ekena. It is a legend taught by the Taino people who were the indigenous people of the Caribbean. I don't think it's a straight up retelling, but um, the author did draw inspiration from that legend. The next prompt is Two Can Play That Game, a, a character who plays two roles or has an alter ego. I went with this one, Life as a Unicorn by Amru al Khadi. This is a memoir about the author um, discovering they were gay as a young Muslim boy and their journey of exploring their gender identity. And they also perform as a drag queen, which I would consider an alter ego. Next we have It Takes Two, a duology. So I had to really dig deep to find this because I think duologies mainly exist in the sort of YA fantasy side of books. Uh, which is not really a genre I read that much, um, but <laughs> but I did find um, the first book of a duology on my shelves, and that is Pages for You by Sylvia Brownrigg. So this book is the love story between a freshman student at college and a graduate and a graduate student who teaches there. I remember it being pretty sexy. Um, and uh, then the second book, uh, Pages for Her, which I haven't read, um, uh, supposedly is about them meeting at a later point in life. Um, this, I don't think this was originally meant to be. Um, a duology since this was published in 2001 and um, Pages for Her was published in I think 2017. So it's a bit of a loose interpretation of a duology but it's the best I could find. <laughs> Next is On the Double, a book with two timelines. So the book I picked for this is Julian by Fleur Piretz. Um, Fleur and Julian were a uh, lesbian couple uh, and they were both artists and they were going to do a um, sort of performance piece of art where they would get married uh, in all the countries where it was legal to get married as a lesbian couple. But tragically after getting married in four different countries Julian gets a brain tumour uh, and she passes away and this uh, is a memoir of uh, that time. It is set in two timelines in that it centers Julian's death uh, and then one timeline goes from her death and um, forward in time and talks about the grieving process of Fleur and then the other timeline is from when they met and their relationship and their marriage and the art project they were doing uh, until she dies. This is a book that hasn't been translated into English yet. It does say on her website that it is being translated but it doesn't really give me any more information on whether it's already picked up by a publisher or anything. Um, but yeah, I still wanted to mention it because it is a really, really beautiful memoir. It is both devastating and um, a real celebration of love. Then we have A Perfect Pair, the last two books you gave five stars to. Um, this is going to be no surprise if you watched my last video. They are Ace by Angela Chen and Still Life by Sarah Rinman. I really love both these books um, for very different reasons. Um, and what I said in my last wrap up as well is that um, every time I pick up a new book I'm hoping it will give me something like these two books gave me. The next prompt is two for the show, a book that has been adapted, um, a book that has been adapted to film two or more times. Uh, 
and I'm, go and I'm gonna go with a classic, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I have seen the 1995 BBC miniseries and also the film with Kira Knightley. I really enjoy both of those adaptations. I think the BBC series stays a little bit closer to the book, um, but then the film has just really gorgeous cinematography, so I guess it's just sort of what you're in the mood for. So that's Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Next prompt is to the company a book with two or more authors or a translated book. And for this I picked When They Call You a Terrorist, a Black Lives Matter memoir by Patrice Khan Colors and Asha Bandele. This is, um, like it said, a, a memoir on the Black Lives Matter movement and I think the two things that I really took away from this book was that I, it told me a lot about how racism can be systemic and really introduced me to that topic and also the topic of microaggressions. I've read more works that deal with that topic um, since, but uh, this was the first book that really introduced me to those things. And the last prompt is Double Take. Uh, recommend two books you think will pair well together and tell us why. So I've been trying to pick some non-fiction books for this video, just to give you some recommendations for non-fiction November. And um, for this question I have two non-fiction books as well. And they are In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado and No Visible Bruises by Rachel Louise Snyder. Uh, In the Dream House is a memoir again. Um, where the author talks about her relationships with her girlfriend at the time who was um, very abusive, um, mainly emotional abusive but also physical sometimes. The way this book is set up is very interesting because every chapter is a different style of writing. Um, Every chapter will say something like Dream House as Lost in Translation, Dream House as Spy Thriller, um, Dream House as The Wrong Lesson, Dream House as Deja Vu, um, Dream House as I Love Lucy, Dream House as Cautionary Tale. So it's a very literary memoir which tells a really heartbreaking, gut-wrenching story. And then No Vessel for Bruises is about the global epidemic of violence against women. Uh, and this is a more uh, sort of scientific approach. The uh, author splits this book into three. One is from the victims, the other is from the perpetrators and then the third one is um, about professionals who get to deal with this violence in their line of work. And the author in this book really tackles some uh, misconceptions about violence, um, that it is a question of poor choices, uh, you know, if it only gets bad enough people will leave, uh, there's only an unlucky few who get to deal with this type of violence. This book just sort of debunks those misconceptions. So yeah, I think they really pair well together because one is a very personal story and the other one is a more scientific approach um, and telling us a little bit more about the background of domestic violence. So yeah, not the most um, happy of topics. Yeah, still two books I would highly recommend picking up. So yeah, that was the Think Twice book tag. Um, I'm going to tag a couple of people. I'll tag Olivia over at Bibliogool. I'll tag Monica of Dog Eared Musings. And I'll tag Heather of Soggy Expat Books Nerd. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye.